Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate land website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today, it just it's just so special when I can rope in a true hero, a true, one of those just rare members of society that not only is interested in saving your life, but also saving your life financially. Today, I'm pleased, I'm proud, I'm honored to have back on the podcast from Tammyland.com, your favorite firefighter from Haverhill, Massachusetts, Jeff Axton. Jeff, how are you? Oh, great, Mark. Again, thank you for the great intro. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You you know, it was funny because I was talking to the mastermind, you weren't on, and I I was saying to everybody, you know, I think there's a reason that Jeff has a competitive advantage over the rest of us. And it just has to do with fearlessness because there's a fire in a building and everyone else's reaction is to run away. And your reaction is, okay, let's go in (laughs) and take care of it. (laughs) And, you know, and there's a certain, there's a certain mentality, there's certain courage, there's a certain fearlessness that I think then translates into business where you would look at a deal and where someone else might see all the risks involved, right, and have paralysis by analysis, you have been trained to say, okay, I'm going to fight this. How can we solve it? And you just do it. Do you, yeah. agree, do you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, though, it, 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 I didn't start like that. I mean, on my first few deals, I was definitely a little nervous, just like everyone else is. And... Um, Eventually, just like just like firefighting, uh, you, your first few fires, you're very very nervous, and you're like, all right, is is this for me? Am I, you know, how am I going to react? It's the same, similar to land, you know, your first few deals, you, you're like, all right, you're testing the waters, you know, is is this going to work? Uh, you know, I'm a little nervous, but once you get rolling and get working in it and become a professional at it, then it uh, becomes a lot easier, and, and you don't get as nervous anymore. Yeah, I mean, there's always that little bit of nervousness, but um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 with I, I, still, I still get a little nervous before I write the check. Oh you yeah, know, yeah, sometimes, yeah, especially if it's a big check. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But then you know, but then there's a, the other part of me, right? That the kind of the greedy side of me that sees the potential profit, and it's fighting the fear part of me that's seeing the potential loss. But I mean, I I know it's weird to say out of thousands and thousands of deals. I've never lost money on a deal in this business. Now, not every deal have I made my 300% to 1,000%, you know, but even then, on a deal where I made 100% and I was disappointed, right, it was 100%. It's, right. it's, 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 a, it's a weird niche. It's a weird, weird niche. Yeah, actually, I just, I just had a deal like that recently where I made 100% and it was a cash deal, but I was a little upset about it. And I, and the reason I got a hundred percent, I thought I was getting more, was there was some taxes owed on it. And so I, when I went to pay them off, it was more than I expected. And I looked at my percentage; it was a hundred percent. And I was like, a little upset. And then afterwards, yeah. I'm saying, it's a hundred percent, Jeff. Don't be, don't be upset. <laughs> you know? No, but that's how that this business spoils you in that way. I was, I was talking oh, to Bob does. Anderson about that, and he was like, Yeah, I only made eight hundred percent. I'm like, you can you just say that again? I only made 800%. Like anyone else in any other real estate niche or investment niche, we'd be like, you need to get your head examined. Oh yeah, I was I was talking to one one of the uh one of the coaching students and he was he was saying uh he was he's been in real estate for a long time. He's he's just getting into this land business. And I was telling him I was like, yeah, I I buy parcels and they usually sell if you're looking for cash, you know, about a month month and a half, uh, if you're looking for seller financing, I usually sell them in about a week or two, and, and he couldn't believe it. And, and I, I'm just, I didn't even think about it because I'm just so used to doing it over and over again that I haven't been buying and selling houses in a long, long time, so you know, probably back and saying, oh yeah, that's right, it, it is a lot quicker in land. 
Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and I had a guy ask me, he's like, well, if it's so great, or what, 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 what was it? He's like, he's like, it seems like you'd have to do a lot of deals versus one house. And he's like, it seems like it's just a constant hustle. Am I interpreting that correctly? And I'm, I was thinking to myself, well, yeah, maybe you have to do five deals or six deals, right, in land that would equal one house rental. Correct? Correct. Yeah. But that being said, the house rental has constant maintenance. You're constantly throwing money into that house. You have constant tenant issues. It's, you know, it's a headache. It's a maintenance headache where you do six deals in land and you can get all those deals done in, in a lot faster time than you can do one house deal. So the velocity is, uh, is a lot quicker too, right? Yeah, and in the in the amount of money you have to put up for a house too. I, oh, I've done both. I've yeah. done houses. I've done land. I, I put up, you know, for something like that, you put up three or four thousand dollars, and you'll get your five six hundred dollars a month. You know, it'll take you a month or two, and then if uh, you have a house deal, you know, you're putting up a lot of money, and if it's your own or you're borrowing, it's yeah, it's a it's a process. It's a it's a much more difficult, complicated process than what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then even some houses, I remember a few of them. And in fact, that's one of the reasons I got into this business. I was making two or three hundred dollars at the end of the month, and then I and I was doing land as well. And I said, and I said to myself, I'm like, it's make it's it's taken me a month or two to make two hundred three three hundred dollars a a month. And this house has cost me so much, so much time away from my family, uh, money out of my pocket, stress, and uh, no, it's just that. Slam dunk for me when I when I started this business. Yeah, yeah. Especially you know people who own rental houses would definitely know you know what I'm talking about on that end. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because like I'll go on bigger pockets, and I can see people who are viewing my profile. They kind of have that functionality when you have an account with them, and it's always these house flippers, right? It's like yeah. it's like you know maybe a, a, a broker or two, and then it's like the house flipper. Yeah, and uh, like, oh yeah, that that sounds better than than what I'm doing. So it's always interesting. They want to kind of connect. Are you are you on bigger pockets? I I am on bigger pockets. I I have to get on there more though. I I, uh, I have so much time in the day I spend. I and I wish I could uh, do a few more things like that. But um, I am on there. Yeah, I think bigger pockets could even be an, an interesting place to market land. What do you think? It might be. It might be. I mean, you're looking at a lot of other investors. I mean, the prices we sell, we're selling them. You know, they could just turn around and resell them and make profit. So definitely, um, you just gonna have to educate them a little bit with a spreadsheet and show, okay, this is how you do this. In right. A way. It's, it's, yeah. You know what? It's not a bad marketing idea. You know what? Okay, if you're listening to the podcast, you're welcome. That's another million dollar marketing idea. <laughs> there that, you go. Uh, you know that we're giving away for free. My wife's going to kill me. Free? What are you doing? You're creating your own competition. I know. But, you know, you know, it's so funny. I don't have that scarcity mentality anymore because there's just so much out there. Yeah, I, I, I get that once in a while, too. Is, is, is there enough? You know, that, you know they, they say, geez, is, is gonna, if you teach too many, it's going to be overcrowded. And we've, I've heard, you've heard that before on your podcast. And, and uh, there's, there's thousands of counties. There's thousands, thousands of, of counties untouched and, counties too. Right, right. And you know the bottom line is, you know, only a few very s- small percentage of people that ta- that get the training then take action. Right? Yeah. So, um yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not in fact I'm not worried about it at all. Because um I've been doing it long enough to see like, oh, it's not affecting my offers. It's not affecting my deal flow. So speaking of offers and deal flow, you, I know you got that monster deal. We talked about it a while ago, and you're like, "Don't say anything. Don't, don't, you know, uh, jinx it." So we like stop talking about it. And then was it was like a week or two later, you're like, "Mark, I got it. I closed it." So l- let's hear about that deal. Let's break it, break it down. Yeah, that uh, it was a great deal, and. Uh... All right, so so it's standard mailing like I normally do. I, I don't go to the many of uh, the auctions. I do everything from home, so I, I do a lot of mailings is one of my uh, sources. And, uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I mailed to a gentleman who had a 640-acre parcel. And uh, I offered him 15 grand, and he accepted it. 15 grand for 640 acres. What, what is that per acre? I can't even, the, the math is Oh, jeez, I, I, I don't even know. I, the reason I picked 15 grand, because that's, I think that, I, I was like, you know what, I just bought a bunch of land. I go, that, I don't want to spend over 15, this, this list, this, that, this that's, uh, that's mailing list. That's 23 bucks an acre. <laughs> you, should be, you should be embarrassed by that offer. But you, you know, I, but it just goes to say, you show, like you, this, this is the business. Like, be ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Right. right. You know, but on the other end, Mark, this is 640 acres, and um, you know, 15 grand is a lot of cash for some people. You know, they, no, they I, might. I, I, I agree. Know? I agree. But he should have at least gotten 50 bucks an acre. He could have. He, could, you know. Um, yeah, I guess he could have. He, he was, it was one of those things. I wasn't really targeting that larger acreage, but he was on my mailing list. And so I said, you know, I, I, I can't not mail these large parcels because, uh, I mean, there are investors that will buy them if I don't buy them. So someone will make money on it, you know? Right, exactly. So, uh, so yeah, so 640 acres. and uh, So, you know, bottom line is, like, you could be lazy with that deal, and you could flip it for 100 bucks an acre, Right. Yes. If you if you wanted to. Right. So if you just wanted to be lazy, just for the fun of it, you could have made forty nine thousand dollars on one deal. But right. because you're not lazy, you're gonna you're gonna subdivide it into fourteen forties and one eighty, correct? Yeah, I'm 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 looking at uh looking into it right now about uh cutting it up and uh you know, a forties out there are going for between uh, Ten to twenty, you know, depending on the lot. Okay, so let, let's say you Road sold access. it for fifteen thousand. Right, right. So <laughs> your potential profit is uh, two hundred forty thousand dollars. Forty. Wait, yeah, two four two hundred forty thousand. That's that's your gross. So your potential is two hundred twenty five thousand dollars profit on one deal. House right. flippers, let's see you do that on one deal. <laughs> and, and you know what, uh, Mark? That's that's one of my uh, one of my parcels that are paying for my kids' co- education. You know, so that that'll go uh, in one of those side accounts that say, you know what, it's going to pay the kids' college tuition. So. Yeah. So so there you go. So Jeff Junior has uh, is is definitely going to be going where Harvard now. And yeah. Now, now you can afford from, private school. Harvard, right. MIT. He went from UMass to uh, Harvard. Yeah, just so, like that. yeah, exactly. So from <laughs> U, so from UMass to Harvard on one deal. That you yeah. know what? I think we got our show title. <laughs> UMass to Harvard. U, one UMass deal. to Harvard from one deal. <laughs> yeah, on one deal. Yeah. How how Jeff did that? So <laughs> all right. So let let's break that deal down. How difficult was it to negotiate it? I mean, did did the did the seller give you any indication that? You know, can we negotiate this? I mean, fifteen seems a bit low. No, I, I direct right when I got the accepted offer in the mail. I uh, I called him up directly and said, you know, uh, nice to talk to you, sir. I, I uh, you know, I have have the purchase sale agreement. Can you tell me a little bit more about this parcel? Because I don't know what's on it. Maybe this is, has this waste on it or something. You know, I, I don't know. So uh, I said, are there any liens on the property? And um, he described it, and there's actually a there's actually a, a little fenced entrance too, so that was kind of neat. That's and, nice. Uh, That's a nice little improvement. Yeah. Yeah, and so he has a fenced entrance with a road that goes through these just a big giant. It's up in the mountains, so uh, it it looks beautiful from above. I haven't been over to the property yet, but um, yeah, I he, I uh, said all right. Well, listen, um, such a big deal. I like to close with title companies. You know, um, I don't want to mess around with this. I'm putting up too much money. And so, uh, so I said, okay, the so-and-so title company will be contacting you, and we'll we'll wrap this up in a couple of weeks. And he's like, okay. Would you okay, would you say great. would you say you need to close your title for anything over five thousand? That's what I do. Yeah, anything over five thousand. It's yeah, and it's um, it's easier. You know, it's they they do all my work for me. You what, know, what I mean, t- I, what title company do you like? I I like uh, I used to use Stewart Title, okay. and then National, and um. They've been pretty good over the years, but uh, sometimes I'll, I'll go in, like this one, I, I went directly into um, the city closest to it. Oh, and, no. Uh, Don't tell me you're using Western. 
you know what? Are you using Western? I think I, think I did. Oh gosh, Jeff, oh, why did you talk to me about this? I know. Well, I you know I'm, I was the well, last get, thing on my mind ready. was this. I was like, get me get me a deal and close. I mean, get me a title company and close this thing. So get, get ready to deal with somebody who is typically going to not answer your phone calls and you know treat your deal like it's the last thing they want to do. And then, oh by the way. Can you? We want to see your corporation papers. Uh, we're going to need this, this, and this. Like you have to do all this paperwork with those guys compared to First American. Wow, Mark, I, I honestly had a pretty good experience with them. You, do, I've had experiences with them, but I wouldn't say they were good. Yeah, no, they. I mean, they were okay to me. They were just another, another title company. It wasn't uh, anything special. Okay, and uh, they didn't but, make you uh, jump through a bunch of hoops. And no, the only thing there was one page they they kept. Asking me to fill out, and they already had all the information. Just, just random stuff. Just my phone number, my address, all the stuff that I already gave them. And uh, other than that one page, they kept asking me to fill out. It was done quickly. Great. It was, I don't know. Everything was done fine. I, I, I didn't have any complaints. But all right, great. Well, that's okay. So, well, that's good. Okay, so you're closing through title. You get the preliminary title report. Anything come come up from that? Did you nothing. have to clear up anything? Nothing. Clean title. Uh, clean title. Um, there was a, a little bit of back taxes, but just one or two years. It wasn't much. Wow. How and, much? How uh, much were the back taxes? Like six hundred forty acres, like a thousand bucks? Yeah. No, it was like two, two. I think it was like two, two something was was one year behind or something. It was two hundred dollars wow. a year. So they were one year behind or some. And uh, so that was it. I'm boiling, was, boiling with jealousy right now. And then, uh, yeah, he, he's owned it for a long time. And just never so, did it. So why do you sell it? Well, you just didn't want to do I, anything with it, kids. I don't know. I don't ask those questions. Just you like care. you said, yeah. you don't, I, don't, I don't judge. You know, I don't, I don't judge. You know, same same when people buy my land. Sometimes I, you know, I I'll have parcels out in the middle of nowhere, and I get that a lot. People say, you know, you're buying pieces of land in the middle of nowhere. Who's going to buy that? I don't know how many people have said that to me. Yeah. And you'd be surprised how many people buy. These parcels of land from me. Yeah, yeah. My, I wouldn't my, be doing I, six. I, I, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't be doing the six years uh, if people <laughs> weren't buying from me. You know. No, I know. My uh, my uncle came to visit me, and I showed him my website, and he's like, "Mark, why don't you start selling property on the moon?" Remember, the, remember <laughs> that guy was selling on the moon. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, and, I love uh, that. I'm, I'm like, I'm like Uncle Alan. You understand? There's a pig for every barn. There's somebody out there that loves this property, and they love the fact they can afford it. You know, stop being such a land snob. You know, because like to him, you know, like he lives in the city. He thinks land should be a million dollars an acre, and you know, you should sell it only to developers. And I'm like, don't be such a snob. Yeah, I I, I love when they ask me that question. I, I really I get it. I, I must get it once a week. You know, either from work or from a relative or somebody. Yeah. Uh, you know why? Who would buy that? It doesn't make sense, Jeff. Yeah, you know, it's another barrier to entry of why we don't have a lot of competition too, because yeah. you're, you know, your typical uh, real estate trained person is going to say, "Oh, that's that's not good property. I, I wouldn't want. I wouldn't buy that." And right. they're not looking at the fact that no, they're not the customer, right? I mean, you know, I don't, uh, I don't eat at Carl's Jr. and I don't eat a lot of fast, greasy food. But they seem like they're doing pretty well. Right. That's true. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got a call. I got another. Uh, in realtors, yeah, they stay away from, they, they don't really like land either. They don't, you know, and I don't blame them. They, you don't make much money with this thing unless it's a large parcel. Right. And even the large parcels take a while to sell. Uh, if you're going to sell it all cash on, on regular real estate terms, I guess. But, um, for instance, I, got a, I, got, I just got a call. Uh, from an attorney last week working for an estate and they basically almost gave me the land away. I mean, I, I paid a little bit for it, but uh, they were going to donate it. And I said, well, well I said, what, why, why are you getting rid of it? And they said, well, the owner, doesn't, owner of the estate doesn't want it. And they called the realtors in the area and they say it's worthless. And then I looked, I looked up these parcels Guarantee five to ten thousand dollars. I mean, uh, yeah. guaranteed, and they just basically handed them over to me. You know, and, yeah, uh, yeah. 
and I'm like, all right, well, if the real, they called real estate agents telling them that it's useless, and, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, honestly, Mark, one of them, I don't think I'm going to sell. I think I'm going to keep it for myself. I mean, it has, has beautiful views, electricity, and a nice little residential neighborhood. Oh, yeah, I definitely keep that for the kids. And I'm like, yeah, and I was like, geez, yeah. I don't understand this. You yeah, know, but, no, I know. That, well, yeah, the, you know, realtors want the slam dunk deals. They want, they, and they want them what they're trained to sell, which is homes. Right. right. You know, they're, you don't get trained to sell raw land. It's not sexy. You know, people don't necessarily get emotionally attached to a piece of land like they would a house where you, when you show it to them, you know, oh, here, here's the fireplace. Here's the granite kitchen countertops. You know, <laughs> here's the land. Look at these beautiful views. Yeah. Right. You're you're five miles from town. Um, so it's hard. It's a harder thing for them to sell where for us we can do it from anywhere in the world using our computer and a little bit of marketing prowess and sell it in a week to a month right and i and i used to be a realtor mark i used to do the whole i used to be a sales agent and uh I yeah, what, what was your experience with that did you like that at all no no i did not um the only way i would have liked it if, if i didn't have a family and i had a lot of free time on my hands then right. I, then I might like it, and I would get become I would try to get into a brokerage, owning my own real estate company. But just being a sales agent, oh, it's brutal. It's um, a lot of driving around. You know, every single customer is your boss. So you have a new boss each week. Sometimes they're great to work with. Sometimes they're not. Um, you know, the money's good. It can be good, but you really, really have to hustle. You have to be out there, um, and then. The other realtors, nothing against realtors, but there's, there's other realtors that are that are cutthroat because they're doing it full time. This is their income, and I don't blame them. Sure. So you have that, especially if you're part time and you're stepping into someone that does this full time as a real estate agent. They're not they're not going to like you so much. Yeah, and, and another <laughs> yeah, another realtor can torpedo your deal. Oh yeah. There's yep. a, there's a lot of ways to to uh, have that deal fall out from your inspection. You get a bad you know inspector. Or a real picky inspector, it's from the appraiser, right? It doesn't appraise to the bank, to other realtors, and then you get the difficult personalities, right? Yeah, I I had some real bad luck. I had a lot of deals, um, either fall through from other realtors. It, it just I really really bad taste. I like to do things. I've always done either part time jobs or jobs, or businesses that I really like to do, and. Um, like I said, that's why I didn't last that long as a real estate agent. I think I did it for about a year. Yeah. Did you close any deals? Oh, yeah. No, it was, yeah, we did well. We did well. Uh, okay. Like I said, you can make a lot of money in real estate, you know, yeah, as, a, yeah. as an agent. It's just, uh, it just, I guess it just wasn't for me, you know, maybe for other people, but um, not for me. I yeah. need something I can, like this. This is, this is a perfect fit for me. Yeah, because, I mean, this you have total control. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, there's it, literally in every aspect of it, you, you, I mean, look, no one has total control of anything in life, but this is pretty close. You're going to get to almost full control in a transaction, yeah. in in, at least in a transaction based business, because you're choosing the property, right? You can choose to make improvements or not make improvements. You're, you're building the pricing, right? You're picking where you're going to do the marketing. Right, because there's some brokerage houses, you you know you're depending on them for their marketing. If they don't spend a lot of money on marketing, you have a hard time getting listings. Yeah, you know, so you you're, can totally control the marketing, and then when you get that buyer or buyers, you've got a scarce asset that they're going to fight over, and so yeah. it's not it's not real hard to close. Um, cool. Don't forget cold calls and. Uh... You oh know, yeah, gosh! Dr- dressing up in a suit every day. <laughs> you know, I'm in a, I'm in my sweatshirts. You know, sweatpants when I work on the land business. Yeah, I, yeah. You, you look know. like Tom Brady right now at a press conference. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah that's great. That's, that's me. great. All right, so let's. Okay, so we got a little bit of time left. So you get the deal. It goes through title, and um, no worries there. How much were your, t- your title costs? Uh, title costs were about, I think it was twelve hundred total, around a thousand, and a little bit of taxes. I think it was around twelve hundred, which is a little high. I could have probably searched around and got it a little bit lower. So, um, so you're looking at what about that sixteen? Yeah, 16, so you're yeah, so you're about, about sixteen two, and yeah. you're gonna sell for two forty. 
Yeah, it's a pretty good margin, Jeff. I'm not, <laughs> you know, I, I yeah. You, you, One of those a year. That's all you need, Mark. You know, you, what a year? Half a you can do half of that a year, and you know, can you, I mean, you're doing this part time, two hours a day. Right, and I didn't Gosh. do it two hours today. I, I uh, had too much to do today. I had my haircut, flu shot, costume for Halloween. Yeah, it's yeah. Today's Halloween. This isn't going to record. This is going to go out until probably next week. So. Oh, okay. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Um, Happy Halloween. Yeah, get those kids all sugared up. My three kids love it. They love oh, the yeah. sugar. Do you ever do you ever uh, get the bag of candy and then like you and your wife late at night pick through like the good stuff, like you know, I'm like oh you know. Look at this. This is like a premium Kit Kat bar. It's a full Kit Kat bar. I'm going to eat that one. They don't. Eat, they won't even know there's so much candy in here. Like, is that selfish of me? Is that is that poor no, parenting? I, no, I, I do it. I, I do this. My my wife. We we have it twice. We have Halloween twice. Once in our we're right on the border of Massachusetts and New Hampshire, so we get to do. Uh, my brother lives in New Hampshire, so we have one Halloween. One Halloween, which is last week, and uh, the candy sits on the counter. Wait, what, are, what are you talking about? Places. How can you do two Halloweens? You're you're beating the system. I know, isn't that crazy? My, it, yeah, it's, it's funny. crazy. How do you do it? Well, like I said, New Hampshire has it a week later than us. And, why, and why would New Hampshire not celebrate Halloween the normal October thirty first? Well, New Hampshire does, but the town that I'm in, uh, the city that I'm in, uh, has it a week early for some reason. I don't know why. And so this our is neighborhood like some did weird candy loophole. Two <laughs> Halloweens. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, so uh, all week long, this candy sits in the middle of the middle of the uh, the kitchen, and uh, yeah, I, I eat it. I, I grab it. I, I just, you know, I'm like, you know what? This is the time of year you can do this. You know? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb. I don't know your your candy preferences. I know you're you're a fit guy. We have talked about P90X in the past. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna say your favorite candy is a Snickers bar. Like you got it, you got it. Oh, Snickers, unbelievable! Snickers, Snickers and almond joy. That's, yeah, I, I I have a gift. I have a gift, and I, I play this game with my kids all the time. I'm like, okay, you got dots, or sour patch kids, or gummy bears. Which would you prefer? And they're like, don't don't, don't wait, don't tell me. I'm gonna guess. I'm like, and then the three kids are like, that that that. They're like, yeah yeah yeah, you're right. I just like I just know. <laughs> and they all prefer the Reese's peanut butter cup over everything else. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're at that point in the podcast now. Jeff, putting you on the spot, what is your tip of the week? All right. Uh, let's see. I have, uh, I have two. Um, let's see. The first one's real easy. It's, it's, uh, and, and I've told you about this before. It's ZimpleMoney.com. Zimple Money is great. I'm, I, I, you know, I called them yesterday, Jeff, and they never called me back. Oh yeah, he's. I don't know what the deal is. I, I uh, it took me took me about a day or two to get a hold of him. Okay. I don't know if he's just starting this website, but uh, he seems very busy. Well, it's it's. But it's he did answer every question I had, so. It's great. Okay, so Zimple Money, which is a, a Mort Care replacement to handle right. your notes. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and any loan you have. So they also, I think they also do car loans. If you have a car loan, or loaning to somebody else, or. Um, anyway, so, so it's a great website to manage your any anyone that owes you money. Simple money, I love it. Yeah, and I use that for my note business. So, um, and then the second one, which I'm going to have to put a link on your uh, on this podcast, it's called uh, www.esri.com. Let me e s r y e e s r i e s r i dot com dot com. Let's see. Slash data. Okay. Oh, this is a GIS mapping solution. Oh, look at this. But but it keeps going. Slash and data. Okay. Yeah. Slash Esri. E S R I. E S R I. Underscore. Underscore. Data. Data. Slash. Don't say tapestry. Zip tapestry. Oh, zip tapestry. Okay. I was gonna see how good is my Google guess all right that's a great oh 404 did i spell zip tapestry wrong is, is it zip do you, want me, then, do you want me to send this right over to you yeah yeah skype it to me let me just take a look at this all right so so what is this that i'm looking at um let's see here so this is this looks up your website uh hold on here 
how'd you find this? This is great. Um, I actually, you know, let's see. There we go. Okay. So you type in your zip code. Okay. And then, and then it'll tell you all about that area, what, what's hot, what's not on it, on the top three tapestry segments. So, oh, okay. Was this on Product Hunt? This is great. Yes, yes, Yeah, it was. yeah, I did look I, at this. This is fantastic. Yeah, but, and it, uh, so if you're looking in a new area for land, it'll show you basically, you know, the income levels, the age, the populace, population dentistry, uh, density, and then it'll show you what's prominent in that area, whether it be parks and recreation, uh, soccer moms. I'm, I'm in an area right now that says 17% are soccer moms. Wow. Uh, and then, and they, you know, it shows you... Um, you know, if you're you're searching in a rural area, it's pretty neat. I, I liked it. I, I just started using it this morning. I, I found it, and uh, it's like, wow, this is pretty cool. I'm gonna, I, you know, I'm going to show this off at the boot camp. Yeah, it, it's, this is great because this is just a quick, just another due diligence tool that you can use, or or have your VA use. I really like this. Great tip, Jeff. All right, thanks. I've got diners and miners for the area code that I just looked at, 31 percent down the road. So I'm in a mining area. I just looked at income. Income's pretty good. Uh, median income is forty-nine grand. Uh, age is median age is about forty. Population density. Oh, this is rural. Yeah, yeah. So this is great. So yeah, so you get to see. You know, how rural do you want to get? You know, you want to get some people there, but. You know, you don't want a populated county either, too populated. Right. So it's it's, but it's a great way to uh, kind of when you, I know a lot of people searching for new areas to buy land in, and um, it's kind of gives them a little heads up of what it is. Fantastic, great tip. All right, my tip of the week is going to be for those international investors. I always get people from Canada and Australia and England, all the English speaking countries. By the way, but very, you know, I have a, I think I've yeah. got a, I've got a German customer too. And someone in the Netherlands. Um, this is perfect for them. Virtualpostmail.com. Have you seen this, Jeff? No. What is it called? It's an online postal mailbox. View postal mail online anytime. Get a real U.S. address to receive postal mail. View your mail online without forwarding. Is that perfect for... Uh, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, What's the know? name of it? Uh, Virtualpostmail.com. Virtualpostmail.com. As low as five bucks a month. Uh, I think Chris Clark, Chris Clark had another one too. Versus, Chris, if you're listening, oh to this, yeah, I do. I have it. I have it. I, but I think this one was less money than Chris's. Chris had a great one. Uh, sweet process. Did you hear about that one? No, he's keeping S- things for me. I know. I, I sweetprocess.com, and that was uh, basically a way to grow your business, um, showing steps and processes of things that you do, similar to what, to what the E Myth tells you what to do. Oh, I love it. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I have. I'm gonna sign up for it. It's free to sign up for and check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna do it too. I'm just trying it out right now. I like I that it. virtual post mail though. Jeez. Yeah, see, I'm telling you, we're it, we're we're, li- we're living in the, the greatest time ever. We really are. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, you can start a, a company tomorrow. Tomorrow. I know. It'd be up in, and going. In, yeah, and in, in this job. This this um, business that we're doing, it's getting easier and easier. It seems like yeah, technology is making it easier and easier. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, this is great. So what's my password going to be? You use LastPass? Love LastPass. Yeah, I use LastPass, yeah. All right, uh, so I'm going to use this password, confirm, start free trial, done, save site. I got because I always have like crazy passwords. Auto login, save, done. All right, listen, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening to this podcast. Um, if you want some uh, wholesale land, check out TammyLand.com. And if Jeff doesn't have anything that you want, check out FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. And let us know how we're doing. Please, please, please leave us a comment on iTunes. Even if it's just something like, hey, the podcast is great. I got all this information. I wish Jeff didn't have such a thick Boston accent. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Leave us, a, leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. And uh, if you want more tips, tricks, techniques on how to make an incredible income actively and passively buying and selling your own land, go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And, of course, get this always informative and engaging podcast, 
delivered each week to your email inbox. This is Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek. Jeff, are we good? We're good, Mark. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for, ha- thanks for having me. All right, we'll see everybody next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.